Hey guys, what is going on? I hope you're doing well. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you about institutional price ranges. Okay, now I've spoken about this multiple times on the channel. It's one of my favorite ways to detect bias, just understanding where you are within that range. So I'm going to quickly recap it. But in this video, I'm going to specifically be talking about the difference between aggressive version of using it and conservative ways of using institutional price ranges okay now i'm going to explain exactly which is best suited to which scenario which personality type which trader all of that kind of fun stuff so if you're interested in that shouldn't take too long so stick around till the end but first of all if you're new here i'd appreciate you subscribing to the channel and if you enjoy content like this if you want to see more like this i'd appreciate you liking uh, the video also check out the links in the description box below if you would like to take your trading to the next level so without further ado let's just get into it so institutional price ranges are very, very simple, okay? Essentially, it works off of market structure, okay? So like this, like this, like this, okay? An institutional price range, the most important level in an uptrend is the last higher low, and in a downtrend is the last lower high, okay? That is our reference point. And so if we were to mark out the entire range, it would be from last higher low to last higher high. Okay, now you obviously in, at this point in time don't know if price is going to continue going and then this, uh, you know, keeps extending out, but it's not that important. That's why I say that last high, low in an uptrend and the last uh, lower high in a downtrend is so important. Okay, but this gives you reference because when you're on the lower time frame, you're not like, oh my God, is am I at the right point or this or that? It gives you a reference to where you are within the overall range. If you know you're really oversold, sure, maybe you can catch some retrace moves if you get confirmation of that. OK, likewise, when it comes down, you know that you're mainly staying by bias, even if it fakes out below this level, unless you get a strong break of this level, you know where the overall momentum is going to be staying. OK, now let's go over to the charts here and use the four hour, which is by far my favorite time frame for this um, sort of thing. OK, OK, so I'm just going to mark out a couple of levels here. So at this point in time, this would be my last lower high if I was using aggressive structure. OK. Let's see here. So did we come? Nope. Okay. That's a little bit different because that's consolidation right here. Okay. Then that becomes the last level. Then it becomes this. So this is aggressive structure. Uh, then it becomes this. Okay. So until that level is broken, not confidently broken yet. Arguably, this could be the last lower high, although it hasn't broken this over level, other level here. So let's just get rid of that. Okay, so then this would become the last level. Okay, great. Okay, fantastic. So it should be fairly obvious to you if you've seen the previous videos why exactly I've drawn these levels on. Okay, now this is a very aggressive reading of structure, but remember this is on the four hour chart. So, you know, if we were to go down a time frame, it will probably be more conservative. Now, what do I mean by this whole conservative aggressive thing? Well, essentially, a conservative way of viewing price would view this as the last lower high at this point in time. You know, we've just made this strong overall lower low. We're not getting too caught up in what these individual candles are saying. Okay. And so until that level is broken, we are mainly looking for sales. Now, is one of these better than the other? No. But the difference is, is it depends on the type of trader you are. So if you're the type of trader who doesn't like spending ages in front of the charts, is totally patient, waits for setups more often, then you're going to go for the more conservative approach. You're going to be going for this kind of approach. We see a major lower low, a major high, a lower high, and then a major lower low, okay? Ignoring kind of all of the crap in between, okay? Whereas if you're reading aggressive, you're probably going to be more intraday because you have your bias determined from aggressive points and structure, and you can simply use it to identify where you are, what the best scenario is, whether you draw a fib out so that you know where you are within the range, it's completely up to you. Okay, so conservative structure is definitely better for things like weekly outlooks. You know, when I'm giving my weekly outlook to the members in the academy, I will tend to, not always, but I'll tend to use conservative structure on the four hour, sometimes daily, but if it is on the daily, it might be a little bit more aggressive, okay? And the reason for that is because it gives me a bit more of a long-term approach. Because whilst we were using aggressive structure, we were buy bias, meaning we were only looking for buys really until this point down here, okay? And so that is, Let's look from when it became buy bias. So let's just say from around here to around here. 
that was about 14 days, so almost 14 and a half days. So let's just say 14 days and round it down, okay? That was 14 days of areas where we could get buys. Whereas if we'd only been looking at this as sales, this would have been 14 and a half days of only getting, you know, a couple of major, major setups. Okay, so I'm imagining for the vast majority of you that you're more interested in aggressive structure. So I'm going to spend the rest of this video just going over some quick examples, just showing you some very, very easy ways to actually implement this. Okay, obviously, I can't give you advice, blah, 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 disclaimers in the description. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm just going to show you what works for me and what I like doing. Okay, so let's just go to a point over here. Okay, so let's look at this, for example. At this point in time, this would be the last higher low. Arguably, you could it could then move up here, but this higher low has not made a higher high. However, we have had this very strong wick and it's kind of had a failure and then con gone lower. Now, this is something I haven't spoken about on the channel yet, but if you want to see more about this specific scenario, then let me know in the comments below. Okay, but let's just ignore that for now. Let's only look at higher lows that have created higher highs. And on the flip side, only lower highs that have created lower lows. We see it's violated down here. As soon as we get a strong break and it holds, then we can begin shifting our bias. OK, so then that would realistically become our last lower high. But to be honest, for me, I would probably mark it out as right here. OK, now, if this isn't totally clear to you, sometimes it can help cutting down a time frame or two just to make it a little bit more obvious. This is being stubborn. Yeah, so you can see it's kind of essentially why I'm drawing it there is because you see these wicks up here. Just generally those wicks is just basically uh, a sign that prices come down, it's come up and then come back down. And so if we were on a line chart or on a lower time frame, it would look like one of those pullbacks as we saw on the one hour. Okay. So this would then be a sell buyers market. What does this mean? Well, it means that on the lower time frames, let's just cut down here, we're not going to get caught on the wrong side of, okay, I see bullish structure break and I see this and I see this because we know where we are within the range. Okay. Whether you draw out a fib from this area, it's completely up to you. OK, you can see that you're in that overall sell zone. So you're not really going to be paying much attention to the bullish breaks of structure in this level. Now, on the flip side, when price comes up and gives you sell opportunities, then that is going to be fantastic for you. That's going to give you lots of different opportunities. We can see we've got one right here. We can see we've had one right here. We can see we've had one. Uh, no, that wouldn't have been one right there. OK, they're just basic retrace entries. OK, but because you know where you are within the trend, it's a very simple way to gauge direction and gauge what's going on. As long as you keep going back, cross referencing the four hour, making sure that no new lower low has been formed confidently, then that is going to be the range that you're going to be in. One simple trick that you can use is once you've had a major retrace in this range, OK, if price is going to retrace again, it almost always will go above the highs of that last retrace. Or if it was in the flip side, it would look like this. Okay, we have a bullish move up here. Don't get confused by the candle colors. If it's gonna have a major retrace again, more than likely it's gonna come down and then come up. Okay, let's just go back here. Okay, it's gonna come back, it's gonna grab liquidity because if it couldn't go past these levels down here, from here, it needs to come up, grab more orders in order to continue pushing price. OK, so let's just see what happens. OK, so we see a classic example of this right here. Sorry, I've just spat all over my microphone. How delightful. Um, <laughs> so we can see here, what do we have? We've broken past those old levels. We couldn't get any lower off that. And then we've done it one more time. And as we know from hindsight, this ended up going down. OK, but it's very, very simple. It gives you context of what's going on, because even if you're messing around on the five minute, you're not getting as caught up. OK, and as you get more advanced and you can really you understand this like the back of your hand and price is kind of around these areas right here and it starts showing you bullish breaks of structure because you know that price is more than likely to come up higher than these previous highs for that major retrace, you can begin buying into these sorts of areas, you know, whether you're a fib trader, whatever, you know, just mark that on, you know, that could be something you're doing because you're waiting, you're anticipating that liquidity to be taken out while you're waiting for another setup. Okay, so as you get more advanced with this, you start understanding ranges within ranges, you really understand where you are within the market and how you can adapt accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the video up there. 
just to give you you know a little insight into um, a quick way that you can use this um, and a quick way that uh, that you might find interesting so i highly recommend that you go and actually back test this with past data and uh, and yeah let me know how you get on in the comments obviously test everything before you choose to go and um, you know use things in you know live market conditions if you choose to do that that's completely up to you um, so uh, so yeah I really, really hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'd appreciate you leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, if you want to take your trading to the next level, strategy, psychology, the infrastructure, all of it. Um, I post, you know, setups that I'm looking at pretty much daily now in the uh, in the Telegram group, then I highly recommend going checking out the links in the description or one-on-one -on -one coaching. You're more than welcome to apply for that. Links in the description. Okay, thank you very, very much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Until next time, happy trading and I'll see you very, very soon.